Welcome back to part three of Firefighters and Fire Trucks Getting Ice Cream with our guest Mark Davidson. We just pulled up to Red Helmet Training, grab an ice cream from Handel's Ice Cream in a 1955 Crown Fire Coach. We just beat the rain back here, so we're gonna get inside, have some ice cream, and finish up this last segment of our conversation with Mark. Stay tuned. Welcome to Red Helmet Training. Awesome, thank you. <laughs> 5,000 square feet of learning. Nice. This is awesome. Good so stuff. we can finish up our conversation on leadership and those types of things, that'll be good. Very nice. Oh man, loving the tabletop. <laughs> loving the tabletop. We do a lot with it. We'll have to get you moving on, uh, doing some tabletop stuff at your department. Yeah, be, no. Be cool. I, I, I want to soak it all in. <laughs> So on the way back, or actually on the way there, we were talking about that small unit leadership, mm -hmm. right? And your military and, and bringing it back into play. So um, what, is, what are some of the topics that you cover when you teach that class that you're literally trying to get to the captain level of being able to implement small unit leadership? Well, the, the first part is uh, just like we were talking about with making it a small jump when you deal with personnel from the tactical and then aligning it with something, you know, the, the personnel part uh, is starting with the understanding that the leadership environment in the military, where there's a, a group of three or four at the, at the fire team level, five at the FIC team level, these different small cohorts, that that's the same model that the fire service has, a crew of three, crew of four, maybe a crew of five. And then that, to me, once you align that, and the dynamic that in the military, they need a leader who at ODARC and with limited information, very tight timelines and an absolute need to get it right because quite literally people's lives are in the balance, um, aligns with the fire service. Because what do we need? We need a leader who at ODARC is gonna step out with limited information, very tight timelines and absolutely right. need to get it right with lives in the balance. So once you make that connection, I literally overlay a picture of a fire team and of a truck company and just to, to explore that dynamic, a leader and two, a leader and three, with the idea that the leader has to lead, supervise, and manage not only those three, but themselves. So it's a total of three or four or five, depending right. on what the alignment is. Once you establish that parallel, that analogy, then you can explore, well, what are the specific leadership needs that the military has to incorporate into that leader. And another part of that to get away from this, well, that's the military and they, it's different. Aside from the dynamic of the needs um, that I just talked about is that we're, we're looking at in the military, a could be 19, 20, maybe 21 year old who's got this incredible responsibility for four lives. Right. themselves and three others, every aspect of it. Um, and that at that age, with that full knowledge of that ultimate responsibility for the lives of the people they're responsible for, as well as in some cases, hundreds of thousands of dollars of stock or equipment and just this incredible level of responsibility. Well, if, we, if, the, if the military can design a, a system, a training and education pipeline that teaches literally tens, hundreds of thousands of these leaders right. uh, from one side of the planet to the other for every conceivable leadership environment you can think of. I mean, just every job the military has to offer. It's not just about the trigger pull or and, you know, those movie moments. It's everything in between that makes that possible. Well, if they can do it, why can't we? Why would we not want to? And when you look at most fire service organizations, an overwhelming per uh, percentage of them, they invest a lot in that new firefighter. There's very few places in the American Fire Service where you go where uh, they don't have a training academy, a basic training, uh, a volunteer agency has some sort of probationary process and, and whatever that looks like, it's a significant investment of time and resources and effort to train that new firefighter. But then you ask, well, what do you do to train that new fire officer? What have you got for them? Right. And then at that point, the whole discussion just stops. It's like, well, you know, I mean, if they're a good firefighter, they'll, they'll be a good fire officer, lieutenant or captain. And if they're a good captain or lieutenant, they'll be a good battalion chief. And 
that's not how it works. The military understands that. And so um, just drawing that out to its full extent and challenging the question, why aren't we doing what they're doing? I'm not saying we're going to turn, it, it's not going to become Paris Island. There is no Gunny Hartman that we're going to bring, bring out. You will not laugh. You will not cry. You know, we're not, that's not what I'm saying. Right. But just to understand that that template exists where a significant amount of effort is spent on training for leadership before and after at each level uh, and saying, why don't we apply that model to what we do? And if we do that, I think we'd have much less dysfunction. We'd have a better leadership environment. And then the final piece is, is this discussion about that what happens in the firehouse in those quiet moments absolutely leads to what happens when the chips are down on the fire ground, quote unquote, the incident scene. Um, and if we don't set that foundation for success in a firehouse in a leadership environment, what happens afterwards when, when you're under a lot of stress, when there's an absolute premium on saving somebody's life, uh, will just follow. And if it hasn't been set, Dysfunction on the, in right. the firehouse will lead to dysfunction on the fire ground. So, well, like you, know, you were discussing in class yesterday, how the military—we go back to military history and fire service history. Right. Uh, it used to be large regiments that were all charging forward in a big, basically a, a, a unified front. Right. That's how wars were won before, right. and then it got to the point where it was small teams, like right. you were talking about, and and we're we're trying to do that i mean we're decentralizing authority you know like you were talking about the yeah. when you're when you're running that uh, stub toe at two o'clock in the morning the fire chief's at home sleeping yeah. you know he's, he's doing memes so yeah uh you, you're decentralizing that leadership down to there and, and again we talk about empowerment all the time you know yeah. what is that what are we empowering our people to do and mm. they're we're empowering them to try to make the right decision at the right time yeah. you know not when somebody's watching all the time yeah. right and that that's what that's all about you can't if you don't empower your people to do things and they don't understand where you want to go i mean that's the other big thing about leadership is they got to see the path that you know they got to understand where they're going to be you know flying the flag too right yeah. so um yeah in general powell talks very specifically about don't give them a job unless you're going to give them the resources and people typically uh, view that like, oh, give them the things, give them the widgets, the new hose, the new pumper, the new right. gear. That That's important. You know, we, we don't want to have our people with stuff that's going to get them hurt or killed. We need to be on that cutting edge of technology for, for all those things. But more fundamentally, that's about a leader's time. And when we look at, at what an organization should be doing for those leaders, it's training and educating them. Empowering them is a uh, this is going to sound cynical. It's a cute quote. That's the, the we empower our people. Any organization in, in American fire service, you go to the strategic leader and say, oh, I empower my people to make decisions because I have to rely on them. Until they do something that I wasn't expecting them to do. Yeah. <laughs> right? And then, you know, how do you expect success when you have not trained, fundamentally trained and educated them to do what you want them to do? You, you maybe even set the expectation. Hey, the policy says don't suck. Do good things. We should just actually write policies like that. Yeah, yeah, that would be much simpler. <laughs> just covers everything. Just, just don't the, suck. The, yeah, and without that that model for truly training and educating, we 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 as a fire service should not be shocked when somebody gets it wrong. We should be shocked when they get it right because there's nothing we did. We would have to literally go to them and said, "Oh my God, how did you do that? What did?" Because if you ask them, "What did the organization teach you for this moment that you did so successfully?" particularly for the personnel fire. Right. Uh, the organization didn't. They, they maybe were in the military or they had a high school coach or they had the parents that were role models. They learned the behavior. They learned how to do this thing well, but they didn't learn it here. And that really is fundamentally the problem is that we have to create the system. D double, you know, the great double G, Gordon Graham says it. <laughs> right. It's all about systems. And when we don't have that system in place to effectively train, you know, just saying go take a certification class or, or go do this, go to the seminar, that's not enough. It needs to be that investment because we wouldn't do it on the tactical side. Right. That's the crazy part. You, when you say, uh, when you, if there is any training for our officer court throughout the, the fire service, it's almost exclude if it's there, that's an if, if it's there, it's on almost exclusively on the tactical side of the equation. And that's important. 
Tactical competence, tactical proficiency is a baseline right. leadership skill. But it's it's not everything. It, it just isn't. So that's 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 well, what I want to see. Yeah, and every single day, I mean, fire companies are out there making life and death decisions. Yes, you know, and it and it's it's not those ones that get us in trouble, right? It's again, right? High frequency, <laughs> yeah. you know, high high risk. Yes, but it's high frequency. We do those types of things on a daily basis. Mm -hmm. It's the employee problems. It's those types of things that are outside the box. Yeah, and a lot of times we. We, we don't think about it because really there's hundreds of thousands of dollars rolling down the street every day that, that weigh so much, cost so much. Uh, every single firefighter, if they were to die on that, you know, the, they, they calculate like that's worth $8 million, that firefighter riding on that fire engine mm -hmm. if, if something was to happen, you know. Right. So every single day there's millions of dollars going yes. down the road that a company officer is managing on a daily basis and most of the time it goes right. Yeah. But we... we rely on the serendipity of those captains that we just think that they're going to be able to manage all those pieces of the puzzle and a lot of it just goes back to you know I'm, we're just doing the job yeah and, well what if it's something outside the box of the job that we've taught them? you you made me think of something back to that instinctive decision normalization of deviance it's not even that they got it right it's just that they didn't receive a sanction for doing it wrong because in those moments just going down the road running the work a day calls nobody captured that moment nobody saw the failure it's a, it's not necessarily on the 11 o'clock news and, and to your point about you know the fires the tactical ones generally speaking the 11 o'clock news shows up and and we could be burning it down to the foundation right we, the, the the truck company took all the windows they pulled the wrong line everything could have tactically been totally against what you should have done channel 11 you know the, the news is going to go, oh, look, firefighters put the fire out. You know, they, they don't know. But the next day, when there's a harassment issue, when there's hazing, when there's something like that. When we're burning an employee down to the ground. That is good news. That, yeah. they're, 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 now they're digging. And that's where the, the, that lack of investment starts to show itself. You know, that fire chief who's asleep at 2 in the morning, hoping and praying that, that they're his, his or her people are doing the right thing. In large measure, the tactical side is not the problem. If it is on the tactical side, it, it's something, it's not a necessarily, although it's, a, it's there, a maladministration of drugs or a bad tactical decision on a, on a fire event. It's they, they treated the customer poorly. That's where a majority of the complaints can come from, not from the, the citizen doesn't say, oh, they violated the medical protocol. Right. They came in and they were completely inappropriate and, and rude and and that's where you hear about that you know the employees who are now in conflict in the firehouse because that fire leader that fire service leader didn't engage and while it was still that trash can fire just no nope, i'm sure it'll be okay and right. now they have a five alarm fire that's the stuff that when it hits the news um that's a big deal that's a big deal and that's why they that uh, that's the other argument i make aligning that fire team leader and that company officer in particular is that in a sense they both wield strategic influence and, and the reason I believe that is because if we have a fire team in you know pick a place on the planet and that corporal you know young 20 21 22 year old corporal or sergeant makes a bad decision at that point the people don't blame corporal Smedlap they go, the U.S. military, the U.S. is awful. They did this bad thing. Right. Well, fast forward to pick a municipality in the United States when that company officer makes a mistake, is rude to the citizen or enables poor behavior by their crew. By and large, the news is not saying, you know, Captain Schmedlap. They, they may get to that point later on. But in the opening shots, the citizens, right. the news are saying the city, the county, the department, they did a bad thing. That's strategic level influence. And at two in the morning, if you haven't trained that small unit leader to, to do the right thing, when the fire chief wakes up in the morning, that's, that's what they're getting. That's the first thing they're gonna be reading about. Right, well, and that's the big thing is when that, that employee is in trouble for whatever is going on, um, then the department is gonna do that risk versus gain assessment, right? We always talk about, we'll risk a lot to save a lot, we'll risk a little to save a little. Mm -hmm. So if you've been a good employee and you just did something stupid, you know, then the department hopefully is going to take the time and actually come and save their employee at that mm -hmm. point. 
But if you're a marginal employee or you're they're looking for an opportunity to go, finally, he did something enough to where we can actually get rid of this person, mm -hmm. you know, they're going to do that. And, and it's funny, you know, when you bring up normalization of deviance, I, I took a safety officer class, you know, through the, through the section, and uh, we had to come up with our own, like, group name, and uh, we came up with the deviance, normalization of deviance. And, uh, you know, we always talk about, well, you're deviating against the rule, but mm -hmm. you got to remember it's the deviance. It's the people that are actually omitting, right, mm -hmm. or committing against the rule that they're, they're following. And eventually it just gets to the point where it's, well, I'm not going to follow that rule just because it doesn't make sense or it's not needed or I don't understand it. And it, it just continues to deteriorate until all of a sudden now there's a problem. It's not the accident, the normalization of deviance where we talk about accidents and things that go wrong right, there, right. but it's also normalization of deviance where you have an employee fire yeah, where this behavior. has been okay yep. for such a long time for us to do this. Our employees have done this for now, and it's like, well, so-and-so used to do it, yes. and they got away with it. Yes. You know, and, um, and, 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 the, and the funny thing is the employee fire that you have is always bigger based on who the exposure is. Yeah. Right. Fair. So if that mm -hmm. if that employee fire now is threatening the customer, yes, you're going to lose. Yeah. If it's threatening the mission statement of the fire department, yes. Right. All of those types of things is every fire is bigger based on the exposure. Yeah. It's always more of an emergency based on the exposure. Yeah. So that's what you have to look at as a company officer, as a chief officer, is who who actually not only is and are we preparing our captains, our, our lieutenants, mm -hmm. those types of people for the employee fires, but are we preparing them enough to where they're not exposing mm -hmm. these other critical pieces to danger, right? And, and really to carry that forward, at a certain point, if you have cluster homes or they're really tight against each other, and by the time you get there, the, the fire exposure is already halfway into the Bravo or Delta side, and you, you make a determination, well, that's gone, that's gone, we're going to cut it off over here. Right. Well, if you're, if you're that person, you could be the best employee in the world, but if the strategic level leader is saying, you are a danger to, to us at this stage, based on what you did, it was so egregious that we do not have an option but to make you, we're cut, you're, you're going to burn to the ground in this process. Right. They, whether they're marginal or not, they, they may make that decision. And, and we, we don't want leaders who are making these kinds of decisions based on, oh, you know, it's, it's, if something goes wrong, then I should do this. We, we want them making it for the right reason. We want them making the good decision for the, for the, for the good of the organization, uh, not just saying what's through the lens of what's best for my career. But fundamentally, if that's part of the equation and they're looking at an employee, they should be saying, if I let this go and this goes this much further, and then they, they're going to, you know, a drowning person will drown the rescuer. And at the point where that employee is now saying, well, the captain knew about it. The, the, the leader, that I told them, they knew, I, I've been doing this for years. Right. Oh, really? Well, that's interesting. So at, at a certain point, if it takes that kind of cold calculating decision, I guess that's better than nothing. I'd rather have them do it for the right reason. Oh, that employee said something incredibly inappropriate. That's not good for my team. That's not good for my crew to have somebody who thinks like that and doing those things and it's cutting away from what I need for my effective team. No, nope. hey, we gotta have a talk. Right. And, and, we, and we nip this in the butt, so. Well, yeah. and, and you look at how we're teaching them how to actually deal with that employee problem. You know, it, it's, it's tough for it when you don't have the recognition prime decision making skills. Mm -hmm. So it also, it, it, it almost comes down to like paramedicine. You, you yeah. go to those critical cue based types of things. If you see this, then you need to do this. Yeah. Whether that is contact your chief officer, you have to lay that foundation. Yeah, absolutely. And, uh, and give them the, the slide deck or you got to do the sets and reps just like we do with tactical scenarios, mm -hmm. and you guys do it fantastic out there where you're at. You're giving them sets and reps to deal with not only personnel issues, employee to employee, yeah. but customer complaints. Yes. You've done those. Yep. Uh, you know, fire engine pulls up to the grocery store and you have somebody out there complaining that you guys are out grocery shopping yep. and dealing with a disgruntled customer. Yep. You know, um, you guys are doing a fantastic job with that out there yeah. in Fairfax. No, I, I, I the, the organization and, and the people that it's, you know, this absolutely team effort that have gotten us to this point to, to have that investment. I mean, that's really what it is. Because at the end of the day, the strategic leaders, my fire chief, my deputy chief, the, you know, the, all the bosses could say, hey, that's, that's cute, but that, that's, we, we got to cut that. 
they, I, I believe that they truly recognize the value of that and that there's, even though this is very early on in this whole chain of events, the long-term benefit is going to be there when we have people who have that recognition because now they have the RPD. They've got something. If they don't have the real-world experience and we provided in trade a good training experience that allows them to align, this is what right should look like. And we've had that feedback. We've had those members come back after they've gotten promoted, before they've gotten promoted, at any point in time, come back and say, yeah, I, I ran into the same situation. I, I had one of, the, one of the guys come in there just was really, you know, considering suicide. He didn't know what to do. And I felt I didn't feel out of my depth to start the conversation until I could get, you know, classic line more resources and, and, and develop the situation. That's, that's, that's a big deal. That's heartening because in the past that person had been like, uh, um, uh, let's call the AP. Okay, it's two in the morning. You're in the firehouse. You got a member who's at a moment of crisis. Uh, EAP is not going to help you right now. You're it. They just turn to you. you. You may not be able to fix it, but you can at least start m mitigating quote unquote the problem, helping them to get to the next step. And and that's a it 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 feels good to know that we're on that path. And so yeah. Well, it's, it's, it is one of those things in the fire service that it, it's one of those, as a company officer, you end up being a marriage counselor and a financial counselor, yes. you know, uh, uh, and, uh, and unfortunately, you also still have to know, like, hey, when do I need to stay in my lane? When yeah. do I need to call a professional, you know, because I'm, I'm not a lawyer, but yeah. I'm not a... Don't play one in the movie. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. you, you have, and, and EAP, yeah, it, it's unfortunate that... A lot of uh, fire service throughout the United States, workers' compensation is broken. Mm -hmm. EAP is broken. Mm -hmm. It's like, you know, hey, we're going to fix you in three visits. Yeah. Well, you're, you're yeah. not going to fix that in three visits. No. And after that, we have to have a better system. I yeah. mean, most of our people, they just want to show up to work and do a good job. And unfortunately, the systems that we put them through when they're having problems, whether it's EAP or workers' comp, mm -hmm. uh, are not designed that way. And we and all need to get better with that. Yeah, but... That absolutely, to me, reinforces how critical the company officer is. Because if they have an opportunity to, to you know, augment that, or, and, and I don't want to say replace, I don't know what the right word is, but if they can be there as that first line of defense, the tripwire, as that member comes forward with a problem, and, and they can help the employee work through it, if they have the skills and the ability to say, not just go, hey, here's the solution to your problem. No, right. listen. Here's a card to call this person. Yeah, yeah. Right. Listen ask questions, get the full story, and then at the very end of that, get the employee to create the seeds for their own solution. If they can do that, then guess what? They don't need to go to EAP. Or if they go to EAP, we've already started down a path where, you know, when those systems are not there, and that's that line of defense. That's the first one they should be going to. And just to have somebody who's just there making more money than everybody else or gets the fancy uniform and the brass and I'm in charge and well, really, what are you doing? You're, you're not adding value to this for the things that really are critical, which is taking care of your people. That's, that's the part where it, it absolutely has to be better. Yeah. Well, it's like going to real fire out on the street. When you show up, your job is to make it better. Yeah. Right? Mitigate the incident. Yeah. Keep your people safe. Yeah. Use your radio voice. If you wouldn't say it over the radio, don't say it in the office. Yeah. You know, and, absolutely. And, uh, and, and it's the same for the chief officer. When... You get in an accident with the engine at two o'clock in the morning and you pick up the phone, hey chief, we got an accident. We all know the first thing should be coming out of their mouth is, is everybody okay? Yep. Instead of bleep, 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 <laughs> yeah. you know? Yeah. Uh, yeah, your job is to make it better. Show yeah. up as the IC, command presence, yeah. work the problem. Yeah. And, uh, and even like you said, even if I'm calling a second alarm on this thing and right. there's, I mean, the PIO is yeah. gonna be involved and all these other big people yeah. and on those, like we were talking about those large ones where they're burning down to the ground, um, the fire service should have a, a mentality that we're here to save our people, just mm -hmm. like we do out on the street. Yes. You know, whether that's putting them through rehab or counseling. And, but then the big thing about it is, is if you have somebody that burns down to the ground and you scrape the foundation clean, your organization has to have a way to rebuild that person to be a productive employee again. Yep. And if you don't have a plan for that, it's very simple for them to fall back into whatever was going on right. or become a disgruntled employee. You, you have to have a plan. You know, we all talk about, well, what is the most valuable resource you have? Well, it's the people. Well, then act like it. Yeah. Put the time, invest the time, yeah. especially for that person. 
And we all know some of those, some of those individuals that have done the, the big thing, right? Mm -hmm. They've done the stupid thing. Yep. And we've scraped them down the foundation. They become some of the best firefighters and the best leaders that we have. If we give them the opportunity, right. if we, if like you said, and that's a great analogy to say, yeah, we've got to rebuild it. We, we, we can't just go up. Well, sorry, <laughs> you know, that you did it to yourself or, or whatever, you know, and, 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 th and there is portions of that, right? You, you have to get in a position like, look, I didn't start this fire right. as a company officer. My job is to help put it out mm -hmm. and they might end up burning themselves to the ground. And you just stand back and go watch and go, man, that sucks. <laughs> right. But for the most part, depending yeah. on again. Is it their first offense? Yeah. Have they had fire inspections in that building yeah, before? Right. Well, and, and again, thing? using that analogy, yeah, there are times when you get on the incidency and say, this is untenable. They're, they're, I've got fire blowing out of all floors, all windows. This is not <laughs> right. untenable. I'm not so going to go charge you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know, it's been right. going for 20 minutes before we got here. We had delayed response time. You make that tactical decision. We are not pushing forward on this. It's right. burning to the ground. <laughs> right. That's a good analogy. There are those. I'm going to protect the exposures. Yeah, I'm going to protect the exposures. <laughs> Set I don't want to Yes. <laughs> yeah. No. Uh, very much. But it, what we hope for in our industry is that we are making stops. We are going in there and keeping it to a room and contents. It, even if it takes a floor, let's just save as much as we can so that maybe that person saves their personal belongings or they can rebuild or whatever. It's right. the perfect analogy. You know, most we want to put stops on these things. We want to get in there before it becomes this completely burned to the ground thing. And to, to carry that forward, if there's an opportunity, even if it burns down, to potentially rebuild, that's that's what we want. Right. That's what we that's that's what we should all be after. Yeah. yeah. Good stuff, man. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm, <laughs> yeah, I'm glad you're out there pushing the charge uh, with the officer development stuff that you're doing and trying to create a bigger, better officer uh, out there. Yeah. Well, in, and you know, I just, I, I could, it's not like, Oh, Davidson. Yeah. Good, you know, if it wasn't for my organization, my department, my strategic leaders, the chief officers that are all supporting this from the fire chief all the way through to my, my boss, uh, the, the battalion chief, uh, Rocco Alvaro I'll throw a shout out to Rocco <laughs> and, uh, the captain I work with John Evans. If it wasn't for that investment, uh, on the organization's part, then it would just be where I was four plus years ago, just, you know, this is awful. We should do better and trying to nibbling around the edges. And then we just got to a point. It was a seminal event, like a lot of, of what the fire service does. It was after the fact that it really is like, yeah, we have to change the way we do business. But, you know, any strategic leader, all they got to do is wait a few news cycles and somebody else will make a mistake and they could have laid low. In fact, that was a, a comment to some of the strategic leaders at the time. Like, if we want the problem to go away, there's, it'll be cheap. We just wait. But if we want to prevent this from occurring again, if we want to do better the next time, we've got to invest. We've got to change the dynamic. And the fact that uh, my organization uh, has, has made that a priority, and we feel calls every week, at least once a week, if not once, maximum every, once every two weeks. We're getting calls from departments around the country. Hey, what are you guys doing? What can we do? We ship everything we got out. There's nothing we invented. We don't have a copyright on this. We're not making millions of, you know, whatever we can do to get that message out there. And hopefully that really does prime the pump so it becomes more normalized. Right now, it's a crazy conversation when you said, yeah, we should really try training officers. As if that's some, right, right. wow, what is, who, who, that's great. Who, where did you think of that? Like, no, that should be normal. And it's not. And, and that's the goal is to get that conversation going. Well, and luckily around the United States, everybody's starving for it. So yeah. it's yeah. it makes it a lot easier to uh, figure out a way to push it out there, even yeah. if you're spoon feeding it. But yeah, um, and, and and you know, again, what you're doing, you know, sharing that message on on that te that technical competence for that the personnel fire and training for that moment and making that analogy, I think, is a huge deal. I think that. Because once it's a smaller leap, then it, that gives any agency or any fire officer, future fire officer, and those are, those are a real big deal, the future fire officers, that opportunity to make that leap and go, oh, I get it. And, and that leads to success as opposed to current models. <laughs> right. Like, oh, that's this thing. We don't deal with <laughs> that. We just fight fires. That's it. So, yeah, no, yeah. all good stuff. Hopefully the book for it will be out soon, early yeah. next year. And uh, looking you know, forward to I it. I will make sure that one, it will be in the mail 
to you real quick. Yeah. Very much looking forward yeah. to it. But uh, it's been my pleasure to hang out with you today. No, I mean, I've had a blast. I really appreciate it. Bring ice cream and a fire truck, and yeah. most people will go. Yeah, I'm getting down. I'll go. <laughs> yeah. Oh, let me so. think about that. Yes. <laughs> And you bring a 55 fire? Yeah, yeah, fire yeah, yeah, with no. no room? Yeah, okay, yeah, I yeah. guess I'll go. Yeah, in fact, are we going back out again after this? <laughs> just saying. Yeah, <laughs> crazy. Yeah, I'd love to do it all, just all day, every day. But, yeah, uh, no, got to pay the bills. Yeah. Mark. <laughs> thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Good stuff. Good to you. Thank and, you. Uh, we'll see you next time. All right, take all right. care. Bye-bye. See you.